Hello all, welcome back to the weekly seminar series on our YouTube channel. People joining, but um, I want to welcome everybody to this um, weekly uh, seminar. And this is the Center of Excellence in Biodiversity and Natural Resource Management, our weekly seminar. And um, we're really happy to have one of our own presenting today. We're having uh, Sandrine Uwase. She is um, one of our, she started as a, one of our professional interns and she's um, also an honorary research fellow in the center and is helping manage some of our projects as well. And she comes from the Botany and Conservation Program at the um, Biology Department, University of Rwanda. And uh, she's going to be talking about the National Herbarium of Rwanda, which um, is managed by the Center of Excellence in Biodiversity and Natural Resource Management. It was gifted to the center by NILDA, National Industrial Research and Development Agency, and maybe um, Sandrine's going to present that history, but it was 2018, I think, uh, when we had a grant to upgrade it. So um, I am going to turn it over to Sandrine now to uh, tell us about um, the great work that's happening there since we had this uh, grant to upgrade it. So the grant has ended, but there's this team that um, has been working on um, continuing the upgrading process and um, making the data and information accessible. And we're also now focusing on um, how we can use the information for um, data products to inform research and policy. So um, I saw Sandrine just um, reconnected. So I think um, she's okay. Are you ready to join now, Sandrine? Yes, please. Great, all right, thanks so much. I'm gonna hand it over to you. Thank you. Good afternoon to everyone. Can you hear me and see my screen? Yes, yes, yes. we can hear you well. And your Thank screen you. is invisible. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so today, I'm very delighted to present to you the topic uh, about contribution of the National Herbarium Miranda to the knowledge of plant diversity in the tropical rainforest and the Alberta Rift. So, Let's begin with the mission of NHRA. Our mission is to collect and preserve plant specimens for long term in order to complete the flora of Rwanda. And our greatest initiative is to digitize and publish all our specimens collection and their associated digital images. And it will be a great contribution as it was an accessible to the global community and it will be added to other digitized by collections like IDD Bio and GBIF. So by backing to the background of National Herbarium of Rwanda, National Herbarium of Rwanda was created in 1965 by a Belgian called Paul DSA and it was managed by RIST. And since in 2019, it was gifted to UR and it is managed by COEB. And since then, uh, we were able to digitize and to upgrade the herbarium with the self 2 d grant. And there were so much specimen that were the damaged and then had to throw away so many specimens and now we hold more than 20 specimens uh, which is which is worth more than 600,000 of US dollars so and from that time we managed to complete the strategic plan in 2021 so our herbarium includes various collections um, like seeds, specimen of fungi, lichens, and even flowering plants. So uh, today um, I can inform you that there is more than six, 65,000 of specimens that are deposited to the herbarium outside of Rwanda, in Belgium, Germany, and in France. And you can see that there are more much 
uh, than what we have in NHRA. So, uh, and by now NHRA is, uh, uh, I can say that it is registered among of 17 herbarium that is in East African region. Here there is um, a picture which, so, which shows different, different countries with, with their herbarium and you can spot that Rwanda is also included. Um, here, um, I was just trying to show the workflow uh, of the specimen collection that we use in NHRA. As you can see uh, on the first picture, we were trying to, to collect the specimens with our partners from the Germany. And for the second picture, I was trying to press the, the specimen into the newspaper so, can, so that we can bring them to the dryer. And here my colleague, Daniel, was trying to sort out according to their families. And here, Diane and Pascal, they were, they were mounting and also putting the labels. And here, we were just trying to digitize the specimens. And here, all the, all the, the steps are being done and we, we were about to classify the specimen. So since then, we were able to publish the specimen data portal. And he, this is the portal that we used to call the Albertine Rift Herbaria Network. You may, eat, we may be able to find many, many herbarium, but with, with selecting the National Herbarium of Rwanda, as you see here on this picture, all our, our collection are being selected like fungi, lichens, and, and of course, this is our National Herbarium of Rwanda. It contains all the collections, as I mentioned in previous slide, that we have lichen, fungi, in ferns. So, by taking an example, when you like, when you want to to search for any specimen or any species. Here there is uh, Asprenium absinica. You may write any species that you want in our portal. And then you will find things like this that we will tell you the collector which year it will correct it, the catalog number, and even the locality, and of course the longitude and the latitude and habitat. And as I say that our greatest initiative is to digitize and to publish or our specimens, you may be able also to find the, the, the image of the species you were looking for. So uh, for the collection profile, uh, we now have more than 20,000 specimens. As I said, it was more than 600 thousand USD and those specimens are from 207 families, 965 genera and 2,157 species and of course 2,194 total taxa. And all, uh, and all these specimens are not georeferenced, 25% are georeferenced. So this is the statistics of our, our specimen distribution by province in Rwanda. As you see, more specimens are from, are from Western province. Um, and the, the other one is Eastern, Eastern province. Uh, the reason why you have more specimens from, from Western, it is because it is where the the Nyungwe National Park is located. And um, like in the past two years, we used to go there and collect more specimen during the summer with, with other colleagues. So, and um, I may say that when the herbarium were, were created, uh, it is when the Akagira National Park were also 
will also be created. So um, many specimens were also collected from Akajera when they were when they are creating Akajera National Park. So uh, here uh, there is uh, a notable plant collectors. Uh, as you can see, Trupin was most top person who collected much specimens in our in our herbarium. And also we have Baragiri Zari Nina, uh, which which is from Rwanda and tried to 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 collect more than a thousand specimens, followed by Joseph Mvuchi Yungan. He tried to collect fifty 509 specimens, so which I encourage everyone to collect and to bring the specimen so that we can have his or her name uh, because collecting the plant, it gives much value to the country as the specimen worth the 30 USD for each specimen. So I may say that our partners are including Karisoche. We have the partnership with Donat Murchirimana, collection manager. We do together so much things like training, going on the field, exchanging the, the specimens, uh, as well as Kenya National Museum. As they are advanced museum than us, we, we learn from them. And also we have our other partner called Michael. He is acting in nature curator, help us in so many ways that are related with, the, with curating the herbarium. And he helped as much in building the, the web portal of NHRA as well as to upgrade it. So there is also someone called Andrew Thompson. He's from KU Biodiversity Institute and he, he will help us to get the trainings in georeferencing of other specimens that are remaining. So we have older Dr. Viola, He's, she's from St. Kabeg Museum. She helped us in, in educating or upgrading the skills from of people from East Africa because from 2021, we used to go on the field in in Nyungwe National Park to learn how to collect how to collect specimens as well as to manage them. So as I have mentioned, uh, we were lucky to get the funding from CEPTOD and use them to upgrade and digitize the 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 herbarium. And now on, we are still in touch. So I may say that we, we were able to achieve so many things, like we've been able to launch the data portal and we published the scientific community through some biota software and we were able to digitize more than, more than 10,000 specimens and um, we, we are planning that we, can, we could complete digitization in this year uh, with the pending grant. And of course, we were able to, to create iNaturalist groups. Um, as you can see here, we, we tried to do the checklist of funds and the checklist of fungi. So here uh, I was with my colleague Donat from from Diana Fossey, we're trying to, to take the picture so that we can approach them to, to our naturalists. So I may encourage everyone to follow to follow us on, on INAT so that he or she may, may see what is going on there and be able to learn about the locality and even the names of the plants that are being uploaded to to, to the INAT. So the other things we were able to digitize all these flora books. Um, uh, it was it was for the flora of Rwanda. We now have them as a PDF. Anybody can access it. And uh, 
the lesson that we we'll, that we we'll learned from NHRA development were were being applied to the other taxonomic groups like moss, lichen, fungi, reptile, invertebrates, and of course fishes. So I may say that the development of NHRA data portal was leading to the development of biodiversity specimen data portal and the complement RBIS. So, and RBIS was launched in past, in last month, and um, that uh, portal is being, is being accessible and you can just access it it has, it is Martilengo, it is Martilengo portal, and um, it contains many information uh, for different uh, taxa. So here, as you can see, you may access amphibian, ants, fish, of course, flowering plants in the fungi. So uh, let me take this opportunity to show you how it looks like when you are when you are using our BIS portal. This is how it looks like, and here we're just trying to look for the amphibians. So it is the I can say that it is the greatest achievement that the uh, NHRA development has served as a catalyst for the RBIS specimen portal. So the other achievement, we were, we were able to upgrade the facility of NHRA. So we were able to create two, two separate rooms for incoming and stored collections. Uh, as you can see here, this is ongoing activities when they were just separating the the room so that one can be store room and the other one can be working working room. Um, and I can say that we were able to upgrade it to the international standard because now the store the store room uh, is um, on 65 Fahrenheit, which is good and and it will help our specimen to do not being damaged with small microorganisms. And uh, we were also able to put the insect traps that can trap the insect, which may destroy our specimens. So about the future research, we, we, we are planning to, to distribute the duplicate uh, through the partnership we are develop, developing with local and regional herbarium. By now, we're able to, to give the duplicate to Karisote, and we are planning also to bring the duplicates to Kenya National Museums. That will enhance our partnership and will let the flora of Rwanda being learned by other countries in the other region. So we are now also creating the courses that can be learned by UR Botan students. And I can say also that NHR has staff, but it is underfunded. And that it may it may bring it to the neglected. Hence, the government funding is needed to support and expand collection. So the other thing is that tra training more students in a biodiversity collecting technique may be advanced. Um, I can say that in August we have the summer school. Uh, and it will be in Nyungwe, so many taxa will come and learn about biodiversity, biodiversity collecting techniques according to, the, to their taxa. And also we are planning to map all the specimens. As I have said, now we have 
specimens which are jewelry friends. So we hope to map and jewelry friends all the specimens. Uh, so we are in development of orchid X2 collection. By now we have 40, more than 40 species. Uh, we hope to increase the, the, the number of these species. And uh, by now, uh, as I have said, with the grant of Vida Brio, we were able to, to go on the field in Nyungwe and we tried to collect 218 specimens. And in 2022, we collected 385 specimens. And by now, we hope to, to collect uh, between 300 and 400 specimens in this year. So uh, the other things that I have been, like I have been saying, we are trying to, to, to remove the species, to, to, to remove the gap that are in species analysis. And of course, we are trying to get more students trained as well as giving the training to the other people. Uh, like in last year, we we gave the training to to the herbarium staff at Diana Fossi, and also we hope to give the training to other people, and of course to to increase the the number of specimens that we have among the orchid, fan moses, and fungi, and of course to update the checklist of the national parks. Uh, I may say that uh, by concluding, NHRA shares data, both old and new, that can help identify plant and fungi species and preserve biodiversity. Um, and new specimen data and upcoming discoveries will create opportunities for collaborative research efforts and the studies in different directions. So uh, we are grateful for our director, Professor Beth Kaplan, and Elias Vizuru, a botanist and a professor at the University of Rwanda. And we really thank Michael Thomas, who helped a lot to upgrade our herbarium, and my colleague Pascal, and Anatali and Brav, who is still not with us, but he helped us a lot, and Raymond, and the other many students who came to volunteer or to do their internship, they helped us much. And uh, with other biodiversity data managers, Daniel and Tassien, and we collaborate. Our, and we thank our local collaborators, Donat and Mali Fidel from Cari Soche, and of course with the international collaborators, Viola, Peterson, and Marco and Joni. Thank you so much for your kind attention. I think this is the time for questions. <laughs> Oh, that was really wonderful, Sandrine. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, it was a really great overview. So I want to um, invite people to put any questions or comments in the chat or feel free to unmute and ask your question directly. You can um, put your hand up. There's a raise hand um, icon down along the bottom of the application if you want to do that and um, then you can ask your question directly to Sandrine. So, um, Hello Beth. Yes, hi Mapendo, go ahead. Welcome. Hi, thanks so much. Sandrine, thanks very much for the highlights and overview about the works you were doing at the National Burma Rwanda. I have really uh, been impressed to see that at least um, on the, on the Rwanda biodiversity specimens portal, you were putting some information on amphibians. And I want to draw the attention just to accept a volunteer for specimen validation, for example, if you have some. And 
I will really be very happy to work close to the NHR to assure that we have more data on that spot on amphibians, especially. Uh, another question. Um, I simply want to know how often do you check for taxonomic updates if the names have changed and how do you try to manage this uh, in the photo to assure you have the mostly recent taxonomic classification? Thanks very much. Okay, thank you so much for your good question. I can say that checking the if the names have been changed is also included in our daily activity. Well, we use GBIF and Plant of the World online website, as well as we use Royal Botanical Garden so that you may be updated. And if we found that there is any, any specimen or any species that have been changed, we also put it on our future specimen with the what we call our annotation label. And of course, we also make sure the date that we we came to 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 recognize that that name has been changed. Thank you. Thanks. Um, I will just reiterate concerning amphibians. Um, yeah, I think I will find you in the office and we can discuss about uh, the list that I've seen already for the volcanoes and the volcanoes. Uh, yes, some papers that have published uh, some. Uh, species names, but uh, from the very recent publications and survey done across the country, uh, there might be changes. So I want to assure that uh, I think I will provide the most recent and updated uh, names of species so that at least we provide this information to the end users. So I will find maybe you at your free time and we can discuss on the amphibians uh, checklist that I have just seen for the volcanoes. Thanks. Ah, that's great. Thanks, Mapendo. Um, I just want to mention that um, Sandrine showed the specimen collection portal. So that's part of the natural history collections, which include the plants, the herbarium specimens, and the animal or zoological collections. So, um, of course, all the folks working with the animal collections need to work together with the plant collectors when they're working on uploading the information into that specimen portal, which is not the same as the information system, which is the observation records. So it's really um, pretty amazing, even me just seeing it there. It's really exciting to see so much data now becoming available digitally online. Um, let me see, I saw Ian has a hand up for Sandrine. Do you wanna ask something, Ian? I'm muted. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. A wonderful presentation, really inspiring, a tremendous amount of work you've done. Uh, and mm -hmm. it's really promising for the future. I have, there's obviously a lot of cross-referencing that happens with any collection of biodiversity. Uh, I'm wondering to what extent you uh, you can cater for this, both within both in terms of accessing the specimens when you have a particular query, uh, and also accessing accessing it on the web. That's a general question. I have a more specific interest. Um, I'm very interested in butterfly farming, and therefore inevitably in butterfly food plants. I'm wondering if there's any possibility of setting up a collection specifically of butterfly food plants. Thank you so much. Um, I think that can also be a good, a good idea we can put into the consideration. Uh, for now, we are still reading the, the checklist. Uh, I cannot say that we don't have the, the checklist of the plant that can be food for for the butterfly, but in the future we may look how we can put it into consideration. Um, I don't know if I answered well your question. Maybe Beth and Michael can help. If there is well, I guess one thing I can mention is that that's a great topic for the student intern, like a professional intern, for example, or an academic intern or even a thesis research project. So maybe a Sandrine um, and Michael, you know, you could follow up with Ian um, and uh, figure out how to get that set up. And I think even like Bruna and Tassian could probably help with that so that you look at the specimens in the collection and maybe with metadata crossing to 
which are the butterfly foods. That would be really interesting. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It will be very helpful for the, the projects we have underway. Well, let's follow up on that. I think that'd be a fantastic um, project to do. Hey, Sandrine, maybe you can make sure to note that down and we can um, we can follow up and maybe have a brief meeting with Ian and, and the others to get it started. Yeah, I saw Bruna also commented on it. That's that's really a wonderful suggestion. Yeah. Thank you. I, I saw a question um, somebody wrote. Um, yeah, Enoch, um, who I, know, I think is doing his master's on with specimens. It's better to have specimens of some plants from the countries in our region. Um, um. Yeah, I have forgot to mention that among these 20,000 specimens that we have in NHRA were collected in a different region from East Africa because we have specimens from Burundi, from Uganda, from DRC, uh, and of course from Uganda. So what we can do, of course, is we may increase the, the collection from, from the region but we have some, yeah. That's great. And I saw um, Michael noted that we use the Kew Gardens resource as the base for the plant nomenclature changes. So I think that was responding to Mapendo's question about taxonomy. Um, oh yeah, and thanks Bruna and Tassian. So I think we have a small team now we can follow up about this suggestion from Ian. So other questions or comments, you can um, raise your hand and unmute or um, or put it something into the chat. I saw Anders said um, the entire arboretum is in heavy need of species verification, updates and synonyms, <laughs> synonyms um, especially as Rwanda Forestry Authority is likely to put up new signboards. Um, the previous ones got stolen, I guess, from marking species. So. Uh, I know, I think Michael was having the herbarium staff work on some species lists, and I remember Raymond worked on that as well in the Arboretum, and I know Bonnie Dumbo worked on some of that. Anybody have any more information or insights about that? Um, I can say that there is a plant checklist of the, from the Arboretum. Uh, what may, may help is just to take that that species checklist and look if or verify if there is updated names for the for the Albertons plant. Yeah, we can help about that. Great. Okay. Other mm -hmm. questions or comments? Oh, good. Michael said there's a checklist coming for publication. Um, the nomenclature is being reviewed, so it may come out in August. And uh, Mapendo asked to share with Arbis the list of the arboretum plants. Yeah, of course we can. Uh, when we are done with adding also this, this plant we are expecting to publish in August, sure we can share. Good, yeah. I, this. Um, just highlights to me that we need to make sure we have some regular cross fertilization between the herbarium staff and the um, biodiversity data staff from Arbis to make sure we're um, you know, building off of each other's work. Uh, other questions or comments? Oh, Vanat, go ahead. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, Sandrine, for a good presentation. I'd like to ask you if, uh, were, if you were able to observe any distributional change of some plant specimens in the, in the herbarium. If not, that can also be a good thing to explore. What do you think? Yeah, yeah you are right, Vena. By now, um there is a, a, it is the project that have been submitted about uh, to see the phenological change uh, for the for the plant due to climate change 
So, and of course, the distribution will, will also be included in that research once the, it is, it is uh, funded and we may put into consideration that suggestion. That is really good and we can do, do it. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, there's another comment um, from Hillary. Cross-referencing with Arbus is interesting. We must make sure the bird data is compatible along with the butterflies. But remember for the herbarium, those are specimen data. So um, for the bird data, those are um, observation records and the sound, the audio files, which are going into the Arbus. Yeah. Um, other questions or comments? Well, um, I, I really want to thank Sandrine. It's, I really want to highlight what an achievement it is to have. It's the first time that Rwanda has the National Herbarium in the climate control setting. Um, and I hope that um, you, as many of you as possible, can come to see it sometime. It's really been a great transformation. Um, yeah, um, Michael mentioned, yeah, good, about collaborating with Arbus with new data, um, good, okay. Um, I don't see other comments in the chat se section and, um, Let's see. Uh, nobody, I don't see anybody else has their hand up. So um, if there's no other comments or questions, uh, give anybody a last chance. Um, if not, yeah, go ahead. Bina has raised your hand. Bina, is that a new hand? Yeah. Is that a new hand up or from before? <laughs> yeah, maybe it was a mistake. From before. Okay. All right, good. Okay, well, um, thank you, everybody. This is really great to hear this update. Um, you guys in the herbarium have been doing a really great job, and um, we thank you and all the partners who have made it possible. So we hope you'll join us next week for um, the seminar next week. And if you're interested in giving a talk, you can contact Vinat and he can help you get organized with um, giving a talk. So thanks so much, everybody, and have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. Remember to subscribe, like, and share on our YouTube channel.